Bring them out, bring them out, bring them out, bring them out. It's hard to yell yeah. when the back yeah. Oh, hey, Mr. Maez is here. Just enjoying a good basketball game. I love basketball. Uh, it's probably my favorite sport. I love watching myself some NBA. Uh, my favorite team, um, Lakers. But, you know, you can like whoever you, you like. Um, you know, what I always thought was interesting was, you know, these guys come from all over the United States to play on that team, and I wonder if they actually live in that city that they play for. Like, does Kobe Bryant live in L.A.? Well, actually, I know he does. Um, but does uh, do the other players live in, like, Houston if they're on the Rockets, or do they live in Miami? Does Dwayne Wade live in Miami? I, I don't know. But um, I would want to know maybe how many of them do, because some of them do, but maybe some of them live somewhere else and they just travel. So uh, I'm going to take a survey and find out. But before I do that, I need to know that my sampling method is the best sampling method possible and I don't have any bias. So uh, what I'm going to go over with you today are what are some sampling methods that we use in statistics to make sure that we gather the data correctly. All right? And it's unbiased. So let's take a look at some of the terms. Okay, let's take a look at some of these terms. Um, so I'm trying to figure out whether or not these guys live in, uh, in, in the city, so in the city that they play for. So we'll take a look and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna randomly select them to be participants in my survey. So uh, I have a few methods that I can try. The first one, which is probably, it's considered the best sampling method. So if there's one that you think considered the best, um, it's the simple random sample. Sometimes we call that the SRS. Now a simple random sample would be if I took all of the players and, and you know what because uh, I really only want to know if these guys in the West Coast in the West and I'll get to it when I get to the other ones. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take all of these West Coast teams and I'm gonna take all the players and I'm gonna number the players and I'm gonna number the players each one, 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 two, three, four, five, just number them all the way down the rosters and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a random number table or I'm gonna go to my calculator and I randomly select some numbers or I randomly select numbers by throwing them in a bag. That's called, and then for each of those numbers, I'm gonna pick that person. And I'm gonna take a, a sample of, of 40 people and those 40 that I pick, that's the simple random sample. So a simple random sample is basically this, guys. Uh, one, it is, the uh, the basic idea of a simple random sample is that every single participant has an equal chance of getting selected. The way you do that is you number each person with a number and then you select numbers at random and those are the people in your study. Okay, the only problem with a simple random sample is sometimes you might get um, one more group like maybe I might get uh, the chances it could happen that I get all the Lakers in mine and uh, in my study and so that might not help because uh, there's different things going on in different cities right different cities attract different people so that might not um, that might be a problem with with simple random sample the other thing about simple random sample that's a problem is you need to know all of the participant like all of the people, all the population, so that you can number the entire population so you can get the sample. And a lot of times that takes a lot of time and a lot of money. So sometimes we really can't do it. So what we could do is we can go to a different type, a systematic sample. And a systematic sample would be, actually a systematic sample is similar to a simple random sample, except in a systematic sample I'm not randomly selecting numbers. Instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe pick the fifth number. And I'm going to go down the row, and every fifth person is going to be in my, in, my, uh, in my study. So systematic means I'm picking each the nth one in each term. So I'm going to just pick a number, like four, and I'm going to go the fourth person, or seven, the seventh person. That's systematic, okay? So we could also, if we wanted to, we can stratify. And I'm going to go over the difference between stratified and cluster but basically what I'm doing is I'm going to break up each of these players into different what we call strata or those different groups um, the easiest thing to do in my case would break them up into teams and then pick from those teams okay so let me let me talk about this separately in just a second but before I do that we can also do a multi-step which means I can do the you know I can do this and this um, I can have a stratified, then do a simple random sample, then do another stratified, so I can continue doing them. That's multi-step. 
We don't use those very often because they're very expensive and uh, we would only want to do it if we really, really, really wanted to make sure that we got a representative example uh, sample depending on what is going on. Lastly, we have something called a convenient sample and guys, a convenient sample really is convenient <laughs> but it often leads to bias because, um, you know, let's say in this case with basketball, with the, with the survey that I'm trying to do, you know, Golden State Warriors and um, the Clippers and the Lakers are the closest to me because I'm in California. So um, I would just go to those because they're convenient, they're the closest to me, and I'd only survey those. Well, that's a problem because I only get the people from California. So um, it's often biased. We don't like to use it. It's cheaper because it, it allows um, individuals to maybe volunteer, but it's, it's almost always going to give us a biased response. So we don't use convenient samples um, because they're not very good. So um, let's get into stratified and cluster, and um, let, me, let me specifically tell you how that looks like, okay? Be right back. All right, here we are. Let's take a look at um, stratified and cluster samples. So what I'm going to do now is I'm still hanging out with my boys here on um, basketball players, the NBA guys, and I want to know, guys, do you live in the city that you play for? So I'm going to send out this survey, but before I do that, I want to make sure I have a good sample. So I'm going to use either a stratified or a cluster sample, because you know what? Um, I'm a West Coaster. I love LA. I love uh, the Bay, and uh, these cities attract. I'm not saying anything bad about Houston or anything, because those cities are pretty cool too, but do they attract the player to live there? I don't know. We'll take a survey. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to first do a stratified sample, and the stratified sample, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick, I'm going to um, put them in groups of teams, okay? So I've got, I'm going to assume that there's 10 players per team in the Lakers, the Spurs, the Clippers, the Golden State Warriors, the Suns, the Wolves, the Mavs, and the Rockets. Now, the the I'm just going to use this for an example, but I could do the entire NBA, right? So um, what I'm going to do for a stratified is I'm going to take each team and I'm going to do a simple random sample, a simple random sample, a simple random sample in each of the teams. So I'm going to take those 10 players in the Lakers and I'm going to pick five of them at random doing a simple random sample. Okay, so I got five of those guys. And then I'm going to do five from the Spurs, five from the Clips, five from the Warriors, five from the Suns, the Wolves, the Mavs, and the Rockets. And I'm going to choose each of those using a simple random sample. That is a stratified sample. I put them in a stratus, okay, into groups, and then I did the simple random sample in each of them. Well, a cluster sample is a little bit different. I'm still doing them in groups. The difference in a cluster sample is that I am going to number, notice here I've got numbers on each of these teams. I've numbered the Lakers, the Spurs, the Clippers, one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. And what I'm going to do for this is I am going to randomly select four of these teams. Okay, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. I've picked 40 people, right, in my stratify. So I'm going to pick 40 people, except this time I'm going to pick four teams. Okay, so I'm going to take my calculator and random select, oh, one. Okay, so I got the Lakers. Okay, eight. All right, eight, I get the Rockets. All right, get my calculator out, six. Okay, I get the Wolves. Okay, calculator out, three. I got the Clips. All right, so now I've got four teams, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to census all four teams. So I'm going to get all of the players and have them be participants in my, in, my, uh, in my survey. So the difference is here, I randomly selected the team, and I surveyed the entire team. So I'm going to have a total of 10, 20, 30, 40 participants in my survey. Okay? So here I had 40, except I took each, each team and did a simple random sample within that team. And here I took randomly selected four teams and then took all of those players in my participants, okay, as my participants, okay? So that's the difference between a stratified and a cluster sample, all right? 
So I hope you understood the difference between stratified and cluster. I hope you understood the, the ones that we use for simple random sample, the systematic, why we don't use a convenient sample. Um, and these are the different sampling methods. Now, if I was doing this survey, which I would really be interested in knowing this, I would probably use a stratified, okay, just so I can see the differences, all right? Um, there you go. I think I'm going to go catch a basketball game now. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.